It's us. We'll roll up each other. Here we go. Sports news, local events, music, and much more. Now, here's the big man's report on News Talk 1400 and 92.3 WOMB with your host, Blake Rosell. Uh, welcome back to another week here on the Big Man's Report Live. I am your host, Blake Rosell. Thank you all for joining me tonight on News Talk 1492.3 WOND. Sounds like a heat wave. Jerry Blavitt's old song there, Scott, this week. Yeah, we got to cue that up here. <laughs> play, it, play it for my audience. You do some rap. I want to do it, but I don't want to mess it up. According to the big. Tick top. <laughs> you gotta give me a fresh start on that one. Rest in peace to the great Jerry Blavitt, one of my dear friends and family friends. <laughs> well, we say heat wave, Scott, because this week has been very, very hot. Yeah, one, I guess one final heat wave of summer, right? Well, it's funny, Labor Day weekend comes, the summer's over, everybody goes home and I keep hearing now local summer. Everybody's happy that they could have a local summer instead of the summer during the summertime. But it's funny, they actually, the people who want the local summer, they're getting the heat they want. They're getting the summer, yeah. Yeah, they're getting the summer. 99 degrees, 100 degrees, whatever you may call it out there, it's it's a hot one. It's a hot one, but you get the pumpkin spice and all that stuff. Yeah. I say summer, uh, summer is still September 21st. Yes, exactly. You got a few more good weeks left. Well, thank you all for joining me again this week on the Big Man's Report Live. I'm all ha I'm happy to be back, um, and I'm always happy to present in front of you guys each week, and you guys can hear my show and some wonderful guests that I have on. Um, so I would like to say I hope everybody had a wonderful summer. It went very fast. Um, I feel like the summer flew by, but I did enjoy it. hope you guys did as well. Um, you know, it seems like the summers are coming faster and faster anymore, so we got to enjoy them when they come, and we count down to the next summer. A few little quick announcements before we get to the program tonight. Um, just want to uh, send my condolences to a, a family friend uh, who passed away um, a little bit over a week ago. He's very close with my fa with our family, and my brother and I looked at him as an uncle. Um, and you know, he was a wonderful man, and uh, we miss him dearly. Love you, Uncle Rick. R.I.P. I know you're watching down, and you're and you're looking over the uh, me here on the airwaves, and then all everything that we're accomplishing in our life. And I know you're with us. Also, I'd like to um, quick congratulations to a good friend of mine in Philadelphia um, who just started a sports betting podcast. Um, so shout out to him. Um, and, you know, a lot of that info will be on my Instagram and you can see a lot more about that. Uh, and he's got a big, big podcast coming up, um, you know, sports talk radio and sports talk betting and all that good stuff. So uh, look at my Instagram for that and you guys will be sure to see what he has coming in store. Um, so good luck to him uh, and his uh, future endeavors on that show. And I look forward to maybe doing some work with him on the show and getting on the air there. And uh, tonight I have some great guests. Without further ado, in a couple seconds here, I do want to um, talk about a little bit about the film industry. And you know that I've always been a big advocate for the film industry and, and, and how hard these actors work. And it's so interesting. And I grew up watching movies, um, you know, with my family. And, I, and you look at so many different genres of movies. And I, it's, I thought it's been really neat in the past few years to be able to talk to actually some of these actors, and not only actors, but directors of these films, um, who act and direct and are the behind the scenes to the movie. And that's what you're going to hear from us tonight. We have a great show in store. Uh, so without further ado, they made their way down from Hoboken, um, right outside of New York City. I'd like to introduce Gianni McLaughlin and his wife, Millie Mae McLaughlin. Thank you so much for coming down. How we doing? How's everything, Blake? How you doing? How's it? You good? We're doing well, besides this heat. Right? It's all right. We brought the heat with us, you know? Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having us, Blake. Absolutely. Thank you for coming down. And I can tell by your accent, Millie Mae, that you are from England. I am. So my grandmother is listening, and she's from Birmingham, and I know she'd be very excited to hear your accent on my show. What's your grandmother's name? Uh, Kathy, but I call her Nanny. Any. About six or seven cups of tea a day, I would say. I love that. There you go. <laughs> oh, have a tea for me. I love the tea. <laughs> um, so you guys have an interesting story. And, uh, you know, just kind of looking back on a little bit of what you're, you had to be able to do in your career and how you got into acting, um, pretty remarkable story. All right. You guys, um, you know, you go back a few years and you guys, you guys, you know, first of all, Gianni, we'll start with you. 
Um, you worked that as a realtor before you got into acting. So you want to tell us a little bit about your steps along the way and how what led you to get into acting? Yes, so I worked at like three or four different real estate offices, bouncing around, always thinking the next office is going to bring me more money, thinking that was going to bring me happiness. But, you know, I, I did well with my act, uh, yeah, my real estate career, but I would just go home and, and I'd go to my mom and I'd be like, Ma, you see those, those actors on the TV? Like, I don't know, I think I'm better than them. I can't even watch TV anymore. This is ridiculous. So I'm just gonna go out to the bar and have a good night, you know? <laughs> and eventually my mom was just like, talk to my cousin, uh, my mom Yolanda Cuomo with my my uh, my cousin Valentina from Italy, from uh, she lives in Rome. She came over and she stayed over at the house for about six months. Um, and, you know, they were just trying to plot on how are we gonna save Johnny from going to the bars and having a good time? You know, too much of a good time. So they said, you know what? Let's find them an acting school for him to go to. So they said, Johnny, you're gonna to go to acting school. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm not going to acting school. My whole life, it was either drama class or go to football practice. I was at football practice a thousand percent. So basically they just said, all right, Johnny, you're gonna to go to Stella Adler. It's where uh, Robert De Niro and Marlon Brando, they both studied, uh, studied with Mar uh, Stella Adler back in the day in the city. So they said, Johnny, you're gonna to go to Stella Adler. And if you wanna become an actor, you gotta to go to school. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I don't really want to do that. They're like, listen, if you want to be a great football player, you have to go to practice. If you don't want to go to acting school, then you don't want to be an actor. So the, the choice is yours. So I was just like, all right, listen, if Bobby Day and the great Marlon Brando went to this acting school, so can I, you know? Yeah. So my mom and my mom, baby, really just said, all right, enough's enough, you know, go do it. So kind of gave you that courage to say, this is that passion, that fire for you to go to, to go to acting school. Cause initially you said, ah, oh, this is not for me. Right. And then, and then once you got to acting school, what was it? What was your experience like after that? Did you, your eyes just kind of opened up or you were just, wow, this is uh, something really cool. Well, yeah, I went to, um, there was one act, like I, my one teacher, they, they, they taught me, listen, before you go and act, a lot of actors, they try to get really cerebral and they get really inside of their heads and they try to create the, they try to paint the painting before it's painted. And what I mean is they try to create a whole actor and a whole thing of what they're gonna do before they get there. Whereas this teacher just taught me, be an open canvas, be a blank canvas, go in open and God made human beings more interesting than we can make ourselves and we could think oh this is be interesting so you just like kind of just go out there and just be yourself and you hope people like it you know right so that's a very and that's a very good uh way to put it too it's very interesting how you know we our mind is more powerful than we think right and yeah. we can do great things with our mind um so millie may so how, how did you get started in your acting career or what made you want to get into acting i acted really all from when I was a child, but I moved to New York to come to drama school. And I went to drama school in New York. And my first job out of drama school in a play, I met Johnny. Mm -hmm. So after that, every, all of the points in my career have been teamwork between the two of us. So right. it was a, it was a short journey to me, to Johnny. I didn't, I didn't come from real estate or a, mm -hmm. a different career shift. This was always the uh, the aim. And and from my understanding, when we talked a little bit off the uh, off the air, you're from East London. Mm -hmm. So you grew up in East London. What was it like growing up in, in, in England? England is is a kind of what it's got its reputation for. Lots of the pub, lots of tea, mm -hmm. lots of uh, English people talking about football. So <laughs> I'm very grateful to be in the United States and I appreciate that this is the country where nothing is impossible and you know I appreciate the mindset that they give everyone it's a it's a beautiful thing yeah and they we've known as the land of dreams and opportunity right yeah. and that's what kind of we were established as and and you hear a lot of people say that that come over to the United States from another country they're 
here for an opportunity, opportunity and the land, the, the free to be able to, you know, make a great career living in anything you want to do. Yeah, this is still the place where if you want to do anything, you can come here and do it. So it's a mm -hmm. beautiful thing, and I'm very grateful. Yes, and so you guys met on the scene, on the on the scene, right? Yeah, we met in a play, in an off-Broadway play. It was called Dead on Arrival, and Johnny was the main character in so the play. So imagine how I feel, you know, Dead yeah, on Arrival. Absolutely. Imagine that's like, you know. And it was a play that had 16 women and like two or three men. So wow. the first rehearsal I turned up to, Johnny's standing in a pool of 10 women. You know, they're all <laughs> surrounding him, listening to him talk, and he's talking about how, like, you know, he goes to Europe a lot, and I'm just sitting there thinking, oh my God, who is this? But. <laughs> You know, once Meanwhile, I'm talking to all these women that I, and I'm like not paying attention to any of them. I'm just like, who's that one over there not talking to me, you know? And that was, that's my wife, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And a few years later, yeah, and you guys ended up, you know, getting married. And, um, but so that actually which brings us to how you created this film together. It's really a remarkable story. Mm -hmm. um, so you guys had planned to, to do a wedding reception with your families and, and have a big uh, party. and. And COVID-19 obviously came in 2020, and it was a, a big damper on a lot of things, let's just say. And uh, that, so from there, um, you you know, you tell that you can tell our audience how you guys guys kind of got into what you're doing right now with this with this film on Amazon Prime. Yeah, so I mean, like right then and there, like the wedding's about to get canceled, and I'm like, I'm so nervous. I'm like, oh, my wife, my wife's gonna be so upset. She's gonna be so mad. She's, you know, all this like. And then I guess I really didn't know really, really who she was like until that moment. And she looks at me and goes, oh, this is great. We don't have to have the wedding. I'm so like not stressed. I'm so not stressed now. I'm happy. She goes, and we have all this money like that we don't have to spend on a wedding. So she was just like, hey, listen, let's spend the money that we didn't spend on the wedding and make the movie, Bless Me Father, that you've always wanted to, to make. Because up until that point, that's all I spoke about. Bless Me Father was... Uh... Yeah, he wrote the film before he met me. So when I met him, I met the story of Bless Me Father as well. Like, I think it was two or three months after we met, I went back home to London and on the plane, he gave me the script to read. And I read it and I was like, oh, okay. Well, this is very yeah. this is you know his his talent was known from from the beginning and you and you got a preview you had an idea of Gianni of this of making this film through um you know a couple people you worked with and you were actually on Pinky Blinders yes. on the major Netflix series which I think our audience is very you know I think that's great to hear and very I mean Pinky Blinders is a big series and um, I've seen bits and pieces and I know a lot of people have tuned into that show so you want to tell us a little bit about that and how that kind of led you to want to write Bless Me Father Oh, yes, of course. That was, um, you know, actually Blake asked me before, how was it like before the show? And he said, how was this experience? And I said, I'm still there in my head. Like I haven't left the set in about five years, you know, like, cause after that moment I said, this is what my life's goal has to be, to be here. But um, that was very, that was a life changing experience to say the least. Um, You know, I'm on set of Peaky Blinders and I'm an Italian, uh, I'm, my character is an Italian American assassin from New York, and I'm sent over to kill uh, Thomas Shelby. So I'm just like, oh, this is great. You know what I mean? I was just like going through the airports, telling everybody in the airport in uh, Aer Lingus. I said, hey, listen, guys, I'm here. I'm, I'm filming in the Peaky Blinders. There's a really big line here. I'm like, listen, I'm here. I got, I got to whack Thomas Shelby. <laughs> and people in the airport are like, hey, he's going to whack Thomas Shelby. Come on, go and he's in the Peaky Blinders. He just brings me all the way up to the front. I was like, all right, I felt like royalty right there. It was great. So then we get on the set and we get actually, I have my own trailer. I'm like, this is my first acting experience ever. So I'm on my own I have my own trail, I go in, I put on the whole the whole do, and then they're like, all right, you gotta get a haircut. I go in to the uh, the haircut trailer, and uh, Killian Murphy, who plays Thomas Shelby, is sitting right next to me, and I'm just like pinching myself. I'm like, is this real? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> just like, come on, this is nuts. I sit down, and he turns around, looks at me, he's like, how you doing? I'm Killian Murphy. I'm like, I know who you are. I'm Johnny McLaughlin, I was sent here to kill you. I'm sorry to, you know, and he just, <laughs> He started cracking up and me and him like we hit it off and then there's another actor adrian brody of course that's who i was in his gang uh you know luca Changreta's gang and uh 
I mean, me and Adrian, he, he gave me like the best advice of my life. And he was like, listen, if you want to become a, a, a lead actor, you want to become an actor and you want to do this for a living, the best way to do it is write your own movie, produce it yourself and just do it. You know, like the biggest people out there, half of them make their own films. They produce them and they put them out there. So basically that night after I heard that advice, I went to my hotel room and I wrote on, like I wrote a, a 60 page script on handwrite and it was Bless Me Father. Wow. So on that flight, you wrote the whole script to this movie. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And so in, a question about like just acting in general and becoming an actor, what you, got, what you were kind of saying is like, um, you could always play an extra in a movie or be a part in a movie, right? But they, but what you what you said was interesting about if you really want to be, become good, big in acting, a big way to, like to be to get your name out there in acting, they say is to try to write and produce your own script, right? Um, and the reason, correct me if I'm wrong, but the reason being is because is that because you kind of get more, I guess, notoriety from that, or just you putting your own mind into a film itself you get to work with a lot of people under you and you can kind of set who you want in the movie and they're kind of like you're the the eyes and the ears behind the movie so i guess it's more of a bigger role you could say right yeah as it just being asked or going to a casting call mm -hmm. and saying okay you're going to play the guy that you know smokes a cigar at the bar and he laughs in a couple scenes and that's it but this is you took this on to to be an actual i'm grabbing the bull by the horns we're going to write this movie it's awesome yeah so i mean that's that's they say that that's in your, your experience from what you were told the advice you were given that's a way to make it big in acting right and that's what you were told yeah and the best part about it is though it's i've always wanted to do everything and everyone's always told me you can't like you, you can't put all your eggs in one basket yeah but filmmaking is the only place where you could put all your eggs in that basket and have 10 different baskets inside of that basket whereas then you could write it direct it produce it sound at it, act in it, and distribute it, market it, mm -hmm. all these different avenues where you're just kind of setting yourself up for like, hey, listen, maybe everyone didn't love me as an actor, but maybe they think I'm a great producer. And who knows if I'm gonna continue producing, directing, acting, it's kind of just editing. editing. It's just throwing yeah. yourself out there where it's kind of like a, the audition is, is there, it's on the right. TV. Instead of me being turning up to rooms, right, and that makes that makes those. You look at some of the the acting greats like Martin Scorsese, and how he played a role in a lot of his movies, and I think his mother was in a few movies. Yes, and he wrote a lot of the movies, uh, directed by Martin Scorsese. And I know um, the one movie Taxi Driver with Robert De Niro in the seventies. I remember he actually played the one guy in the back in the back seat of the cab. Yeah. When when, yeah. when Robert De Niro, Bobby De Niro was the driver. So mm -hmm. I thought I think that was a like such a cool concept. And I kind of picked up on that as I watched these movies and tried to understand more about movies in general. So I think it's amazing that you're able to do the same thing. Really well, cool. Like the really cool thing was having so uh, the background is every single person that's in the movie is actually either my like really good friend or my family. So it was kind of interesting because I was able to be kind of myself in the film and be really comfortable and relaxed because I had my family and friends around me. So we made we chose to make this neo realism where it's we were making a, you know Italian mob about uh, New York, New Jersey, you know, being from Hoboken my whole life, everyone's always asked me, eh, you know, but yeah. it's just like no, it's just the way I speak English, you know what I mean? If you put right. Italian in English, it speaks it sounds like this, you know. But Yeah. No, I th I think that is the most interesting thing about this film. That everyone in it is a is a real person, and yeah. they all knew each other, and everyone's relationship was like already pre established before we got on the set. Like that's 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 for me what is like crazy. Like the bar, the the women who work behind the bar in all of the clubs. Like most of the people sitting around the bar have been served by her in a bar. Like wow. it's a real relationship. That's... Like obviously all the other relationships like. Johnny, yeah, like, so my father yeah. plays the priest mm -hmm. in the film and obviously it's not the first time I confessed to him like you know what I mean right like, yeah he's your just, dad yeah exactly yeah and like he he, he was an amazing priest he, he, he killed was, it 
he's, and, he steals the show. Like once you know that that's Johnny's dad, it's and, like. And wow. then we have the Don, you know, who plays the boss in the movie. He yes. was actually my boss in real estate, so <laughs> it, I always used to call him the Don at work. Yeah. So it just worked perfectly. Just kind of fit fit the role. And when I called him up and asked him to be in the film, he I was just like, listen, you know, like. I want you to be the Don. He goes, I always wanted to be the Don. I'm like, there you go. Like, so it was yeah. really cool because there's like other characters, Gino, Nino, guys I played football with, that they were, they were just like... Their brothers so in real life. Their yeah, brothers in the film. And they were so excited to be in the film. Everyone was so excited. And the thing that we were so happy about is like, at first, it, this was like from getting advice and writing it, this was my dream. And this is about me and all this. But when I really learned, like, getting outside of just being an actor and just trying to just do, like, it became we and ours. And so instead of just making my dream happen, it was like every single person that became part of this film and, and a part of, uh, of it, they came together and it was all their dreams. Everybody in the film had spoken to me one one day prior and saying they'd love to be in a movie, like, that's their dream. Mm -hmm. The guy Antonio, who... Uh, my compadre, the guy Giacomo Vanacore, he is just like, he, he, he told me that his life goal was to be in, in a movie one day, you know? Yeah. So it was just like bringing everybody together was pretty intense. And that's know? truly amazing. We're going to talk more on that when we get back here on News Talk 1400 and 92.3 WOND. I am your host, Blake Rosal. Stick around for a great second half of the show here. We'll be right back. I feel like there must 